Hey everyone, Reed here. I want to talk to you today about a great feature of Power Query, which is the ability to reference other queries. I'll briefly discuss why this feature can be useful, and then show you a short demo on how to use it in the Query Editor. Let's first consider a scenario where we have multiple queries in a Power BI desktop report. Each of these queries provides a table that in turn is loaded into our data model. Now, Despite the fact that each of these queries is coming from the same data source, in this case, a local database, if there was ever a need to update the data source connection, that would require each query to be individually updated for that data source, essentially duplicating the effort and time that can be avoided. My goal is to show you how to create a singular data source query that can then be referenced again and again to bring in any number of tables into the data model. So let's hop into Power BI and see how to implement this. So for this demo, I'm gonna use the AdventureWorks database. As we can see over on the left, we have seven queries that are currently in this report. And even though they are all coming from the same database, they each have their own source connection stream. We can actually see that if I come over here on the sales table that I already have selected, I go to applied steps to the source. And then if you take a look here at the top, you can see that there is a link to an access database file up there. And each one of these things has a separate connection to that. So if that file was to ever move, I would have to update seven queries individually in here to point it to the new location. Now there's a great way to see how these dependencies are working. If we come up to the view tab and we click on this button called query dependencies. Go ahead and full screen that here. And you can also make this bigger as well by coming to the lower right and clicking the fit to screen button. And each one of them has that separate connection string. So what I wanna do is I wanna build a query between them so that only a single query points to the actual source file and that everything else points to that newly created data source query that I've made. Now, just as a quick mention as well for this view, if you do come to the layout section down here, you can change the direction from top to bottom, bottom to top, or for those who like it, left to right as well. So it really helps organize this and show the flow of data in all of your queries. Gonna go ahead and close the window. So to create the data source query, I'm gonna come up here to sales. I'm gonna right click and select duplicate. There we are. I'm gonna rename it over here from properties from sales to data source. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna delete the navigation step, leaving only the source step left. Perfect, and you can see here now the source itself has all of those tables in it. Now what I'm gonna do from here, if I come over to the data source query and right click it, I have another option as well to reference. If I select that, it looks the same as the data source. We now have two of them. We have data source and data source two. However, take a look up here in the formula bar. It says equals hashtag data source. So it's no longer actually pointing to the original file location. What it is pointing to is that other query. We can see this occurring as well if I come back to the query dependencies window. Go ahead and full screen that again. And taking a look over here on the right, we can see that there's the data source that I created plus that additional reference query below it that is then pointing back to it, which then points all the way back to the file location. Gonna go ahead and close this window. Now what I'm gonna do is update all of those other queries that are already in here. So I can come up here, highlight this, control C, and I'm gonna go to each one of these other queries in this list. So product category, and I'm gonna come up to the formula bar for the source over here under applied steps. I'm gonna highlight the original connection in there, replace that with the referenced connection for data sources. And I'm gonna rinse and repeat that for the rest of these as well. There we go, I've updated all of the queries. And the last thing I can do is actually delete that second data source thing down here because I don't need to add a new table. So go ahead and delete that. Perfect. Now let's take a quick look at our query dependencies up here at the top again. You can see what we did in action. Now there is only a single query pointing to the actual data source. Everything else is based off of that data source query that I created as kind of an intermediate buffer. So now in the future, if that data source changes for any reason, I only have one place to update it. There's also some other benefits as well. If you have a single table that has a couple of base transformations that you would want to apply, but that also is used for three, four, maybe even five different tables that get loaded into your data model, you can use the referencing function as well to avoid unnecessary extra applied steps or effort that is being pushed against the server if you're doing a bunch of transformations. So there's a lot of good uses for this to build upon each other. 
But overall, as you see, pretty easy to implement. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, please click the like button below or add a comment. If you want to see more of these videos, please click the subscribe button. And otherwise, I will see you in our next video.